Olive, bed, bed, Kimmel, Dalit, hey, Love, sein, red, Ted, Jud, Kauf, Kauf, Lamed, Mem, Nun, Samer, Hain, Pei, Fitz, Adi, Kuf, Reish, Shun, Sin, Tuff, Now I think I've said enough. Welcome to another lesson in our series, From the Aleph Bet, a series for anyone of any age who wishes to learn how to read and understand Hebrew, especially the Hebrew that's used in the experience of Judaism here in the United States. I'm Mark Golub, and as always, it's such a wonderful pleasure to be with you with another lesson. I can't thank you enough for all the cards, emails you've sent us with such lovely things to say about from the Aleph Bet, and I just hope you'll keep writing. Well, I have something that I think is very, very interesting for you on this lesson. We're going to begin to look at the way in which Hebrew, and really the Jewish tradition, handles the question of God's name. You know, in the Jewish tradition, the Jewish tradition teaches God has no body. One cannot see God. The question is, does God have a proper name? Does God have a name in the Jewish tradition? And if so, what is the name of God? And how is it written? And how is it pronounced? These are some of the questions we'd like to deal with in Hebrew on this lesson. And I want to take a moment to say, I do not mean in any way to offend anyone who out of their own Jewish conviction feels that one should not be writing God's name, studying God's name, talking about God's name. And if the, this refers to any of you out there, you will not offend me in any way if this is not a program you want to watch. My own intent here is to handle the way in which the Hebrew language and the Jewish tradition talks about God's name, uses God's name, talks about the word God as if we were in a secular academic institution. If we were studying this in some you know, college somewhere, what would we learn about the Hebrew articulation of God's name? And that's the orientation we have on from the Aleph Bet. And so again, if this offends anyone, I really don't mean to. This is not for you. And for anyone who's interested in understanding on an academic level how the name of God is handled in the Jewish tradition, which is one of the most misunderstood parts of the Jewish tradition and most misunderstood parts of Hebrew, this lesson will be fascinating for you. And that's my intent. So, I want to begin by talking about the Hebrew word for God. God in general. And there is very often a confusion between the word God and the Hebrew word for God's name. And the reality is that in the Jewish tradition, God has a proper name. Just as in other religious traditions, other mythologies, you will hear the names given to gods. In the Bible, there's the god Baal, there's the god Molech. The Greeks had a whole pantheon of gods, Zeus and Apollo and Aphrodite. And in some way, even in the Christian tradition, there's an attempt to say that God becomes incarnate in the world on earth in the personage of Jesus, in Hebrew, Yehoshua, so that there is a proper name for God. The Jewish tradition also has a proper name for God, but that name is never spoken out loud. One never uses the name of God in Hebrew. The name of God is different from the word God. And again, many people have confusion in their mind between the word God and the proper name of God. And I want to begin by showing you the Hebrew word for God, the generic word for God. And here you see it up on the screen. The word is a one vowel and therefore a one syllable word. It's easy for you to pronounce it. The word is 
El, Mitsuyan, El. El is the word for God in Hebrew. And there's a passage in the book of Genesis where God identifies God's self to Abraham. And God uses the phrase El Shaddai, which means God Almighty. And the word Shaddai becomes a very important word in the Jewish tradition. It's the word that's placed on the mezuzah casing that goes on every doorpost in a Jewish home. And the letter Shin that begins the word Shaddai also symbolizes the word itself. And therefore the Shin as a letter becomes a powerful letter in the Jewish tradition. And this is why, for example, from ancient times, when the priests of the temple would bless the community with the priestly blessing, they would create the letter Shin with their fingers for the word Shaddai. And in reference to the phrase El Shaddai, God Almighty. And the word El is the generic Hebrew word for God. And there is a plural for the generic word God in Hebrew, and here it is. Elim. Elim means gods. And in the plural, it always refers to non-Jewish gods. And what's interesting to note is that in the five books of Moses, in the Torah, there is the notion that the children of Israel believe that each individual nation, people, has its own god. There are many gods mentioned in the Torah. What the Torah is trying to teach is, first, that there is one God that represents the God of the children of Israel, the Jewish people, that becomes the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and then all of our descendants. And then as the Jewish tradition develops, the one God of the Jewish people becomes understood to be the only God in the entire universe. But when the Torah is written, the Torah assumes that the people in Egypt, the children of Israel in Egypt, and Egyptians, and Molochites, and Amalekites, and Canaanites, and Perizzites, all of them have their own God. And that is why in the Ten Commandments it says, you shall have no other gods before me. The God of the children of Israel should be the number one God. And the word for God in general is El in the Torah. And the plural of El is... This word here, Elim Mitsuyan. You'll remember that the suffix im is like adding the letter s in English to make a word plural. So El is God and Elim is gods. But there is another plural expression of the word God that is reserved for the God of the Jewish people our God. And here the word is on the screen. Can you read this word? Two vowels. The shva is never counted as a vowel and therefore the chataf segol under the aleph is not counted as a vowel. So it's a two-syllable word. The first syllable is elo mitsuyan. The second syllable him mitsuyan. Put the word together. Elohim, Mitsuyan. And Elohim is a collective noun, a plural noun, that refers to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the God of the children of Israel and the Jewish people. Elohim is the collective, plural, singular word for God in Hebrew. Again, although it has a plural ending, Elohim refers to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the children of Israel, and the Jewish people. Elohim. And that's the word for God. In Hebrew, by the way, one can add a possessive suffix to a noun to indicate who that noun belongs to. In Hebrew, anytime we add the syllable nu, nu at the end of a noun, it's the word our in English. So if Elohim is God, Eloheinu is our God, Mitsuyan. Eloheinu is our God. From the word Elohim, the mem drops off, the nu replaces it, and we get the word Elohim.
Hainu. And notice that the He has a line, a vertical line next to the vowel Tsere. The vertical line is a way of telling us where to accent a word. In general, all Hebrew words are accented on the last syllable. If a word is accented on an other syllable, a syllable other than the last syllable, very often the editors of a book will indicate this with this vertical line under the letter that should be accented. So in the word Eloheinu, you see the vertical line, the accent line under the hay. And the word Eloheinu means our God. So far now, all we've learned is the word for God in Hebrew and the word for our God, Eloheinu. But we have not learned God's name, God's proper name. And incidentally, you'll see that many people will not even write the word God in English. They'll write G-D. And if the prohibition in the Jewish tradition is to write in God's name, one is forbidden to write God's name, but the word God is not God's name, one might ask, then why does anyone write G-D? And the answer is out of respect. Even though the word God is not God's name, it refers to God. And, then, and therefore, people will actually write G-D to avoid writing the word that refers to God, not God's name. There's no real prohibition to writing G-O-D, but out of respect, people will write G-D. And the other reason why people often write G-D is it's what's called in the Jewish tradition, and we're going to put this up in Hebrew for you, a siag la Torah. A siag la Torah. And the word siag, which you can read here, Samech Yud Gimel, siag, means a fence. A fence around the Torah. And the idea is that even if one is not breaking or in some way transgressing a Torah law, sometimes it is necessary to draw a, a, a ring around the law and to add to the prohibitions so that one does not come close to breaking the actual Torah law. In the Torah, we learn from Jewish tradition, it is forbidden to write God's name. A siyag le Torah says, not only is it forbidden to write God's name, it's forbidden to write the word God, which is not God's name, but comes sort of close to God's name. And that's why you'll see people write G-D, as a siyag the Torah, and out of their sense of respect for God's name. But please understand, the word God is not God's name. There's no actual prohibition against writing the word G-O-D. There's a prohibition against writing God's name. And now we have to ask, what is God's name? And here we're going to put God's name up on the screen for you to see. And this is how God's name is written in the Torah, in the five books of Moses. This is God's proper name. And my question is, does anyone know how to pronounce in Hebrew God's proper name? This is God's proper name. We know how to write it. Do we know how to pronounce it? And the answer is no. No one knows today how to pronounce God's name. We're going to put it back up on the screen for you. No one knows how to pronounce this word. And if there are any of you who think that the way to pronounce God's name is Yahweh or Jehovah, I'm sorry you're wrong. It's a result of a misunderstanding. No one knows how to pronounce God's name. Incidentally, in ancient times, in biblical times, God's proper name was pronounced only one time during the entire year by only one human being. 
on Yom Kippur at the Avodah service, the afternoon of Yom Kippur, when the entire community present in Jerusalem at the temple would come to the Holy of Holies and the high priest, only the high priest, the Kohen Gadol was allowed to enter the Holy of Holies, which was the most awesome moment of the Jewish year. How frightening, how awesome it was for the high priest to actually go into the Holy of Holies, the place of the temple where the children of Israel believed God made his home on earth. And the high priest would enter the Holy of Holies and everyone assembled would virtually hold their breath hoping that the high priest would emerge. No one was even permitted to go into the Holy of Holies to retrieve the high priest if something happened to him while he was inside. A rope was tied around his ankle so that if something happened to the high priest, the children of Israel could pull the high priest out of the Holy of Holies. So sacred was this place that only the high priest was allowed to enter the Holy of Holies on the Temple Mount. And when the high priest would emerge from the Holy of Holies, every one of us, all of us there, anyone in front of the Holy of Holies would be prostrate and would be saying as loudly as possible, Baruch Shem Kevod Mahuto Leolam Vaed. Praise be his name whose glorious kingdom is forever and ever. And while all of those assembled would be saying that line as loudly as possible, that is when, that is the only time when, the high priest would recite the pronunciation of God's name. But all the people would be there saying Baruch Shem Kavod Machutoli Olam Vaed so loudly they would never hear God's name and never be able to walk away from the temple on Yom Kippur being able to say, I now know how to pronounce God's name. So God's name was basically never known by the children of Israel. It becomes one of the great mysteries of the Jewish tradition. We know how to write God's name and the letters are Yud, Hey, Vav, Hey. That's God's proper name. But we don't know how to pronounce it. And then the interesting question, and here we get to the nub of what this lesson is all about. When one sees the name of God in print, in the Torah, in the five books of Moses, what does one say? What does one pronounce when one sees the name of God, yud Hey vav Hey? And the answer is, one recites this word that you now see on your screen. Can you read this Hebrew word? Again, it's two vowels. We do not count the chataf patach under the aleph, one never counts a shva as a vowel, and therefore there are two vowels and two syllables. Can you read the first syllable of this two-syllable word? And if you said ado, you are correct, ado. And the second syllable, nai, mitsuyan. Kamatz and a yud at the end of a word is pronounced I, and therefore this word is pronounced in its entirety, Adonai. And that is what a Jew says when a Jew sees the word, God's proper name, yud Hey vav Hey, Adonai. And what does the word Adonai mean? Well, the word Adon means Lord, and if you add a yud at the end of a noun, it's like adding the possessive word my in English. Adonai is therefore my Lord. Whenever a Jew sees the word yud hey vav hey, the Jew says the word my Lord in English or Adonai in Hebrew. And very often the Adonai is translated in prayer books as O Lord or the Lord. The actual translation is my Lord, but very often you'll hear the blessing said such as, Blessed art thou, 
O Lord our God. One says the word Adonai when one sees the word yod heh vav -Hey. And I'm going to put up on the screen for you now the most famous phrase, the most important phrase in the Jewish tradition with the word yod heh vav -Hey. In it, that is recited at least twice a day when a Jew goes to sleep at night and when a Jew wakes up in the morning. And the Hebrew is Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. And we normally translate this as Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. But as you now know from reading Hebrew yourself, the actual translation is Shema Yisrael, listen Israel. yud heh vav -Hey is Eloheinu, our God. And yud heh vav -Hey is Echad. And the word Echad means one. Listen Israel, yud heh vav -Hey, God's proper name, is our God. And yud heh vav -Hey, God's proper name, is one, in the sense of number one, the most important God, and as the Jewish tradition evolves, the only God. Listen, Israel, yud heh vav -Hey is our God, yud heh vav -Hey is the only one God. And you understand that the Shema has much more meaning if one understands the word Lord is simply a word that replaces God's proper name, yud Hey vav Hey. And why can't one pronounce God's name if one sees the yud Hey vav Hey? And all of you who have been studying with me from the Aleph Bet know that you need dots and dashes, what are called in Hebrew nikudot, the vowel sounds. Without the vowel sounds, we don't know what vowel sounds go with the yud, the Hey, the vav, and the Hey. And without those Nikudot, without those dots and dashes, without those vowel sounds, it's impossible to read or pronounce the name yud heh vav -Hey as it was meant to be pronounced. And then some of you may say, wait a minute, I've seen in the Torah or even in a Chumash, in a book, some vowels that go with the letters yud heh vav -Hey. I've seen the name of God now that I know it is the proper name of God, I've seen the proper name of God written with nikudot, written with dots and dashes, Hebrew vowel sounds. Does that not tell me how to pronounce God's name? I may not do it out of respect, out of a sense of the Jewish tradition that one never says God's name, but if I wanted to, all I have to do is look at the vowels that go with yod heh vav -Hey, and I'll know how to pronounce God's proper name. And here's the most fascinating part of what the Jewish tradition has done with God's name. Where do the vowels come from that you find in yud heh vav -Hey? And on the screen right now you see yud heh vav -Hey without any vowels at all. And now we're going to add the vowels that you normally see in a chumash or wherever God's name is written out. Here are the vowels you see. And what I'm telling you is the vowels you see with the consonants of God's name, the letters of God's name, the yud heh vav -Hey, do not have anything to do with God's name itself. Where do these vowels come from? Well, we're going to put the word Adonai up, as you see, underneath God's name. And what the rabbis did was to help us remember that whenever we see God's proper name, we should say the word Adonai. To help us remember this, the rabbis took the nikudot, the dots and dashes, the vowel sounds from the word Adonai and inserted them into God's proper name. And so you see that the Shva under the Aleph, it's a chataf patach, which is really a shva with some more body, a, a sound given to it, but it's really a shva. They took the shva and they put it under the first letter of God's name, 
the Yud. They took the Cholom for the Dalid in the word Adonai and added it to the letter He in God's name. And they took the Kamatz under the Nun in the word Adonai and put it under the Vav of God's name. And suddenly you have the Nikudot from the word Adonai written with God's name as if those were the Nikudot for God's name itself, but they're not. The vowels that you always see associated with yud heh vav -Hey are the vowels from the word Adonai, Lord, as a reminder to us that's what we should say when we see Adonai. And then unfortunately, there were some non-Jewish people who did not know the history of the way in which God's name was written. And they came along and thought these were the actual vowels that went with God's proper name. And therefore they read this word as Yehovah. And the Y becomes a J and it becomes Jehovah. And there are some people who believe that God's name is Jehovah or Yehovah because they're actually reading the vowels from the word Adonai with the consonants, with the letters of God's name. But you now understand that the vowels in God's name that we see written in a Chumash, written in a prayer book, written in a Torah, are not the actual vowels of God's name. They're actually the vowels from the word Adonai. In reality, we still do not know what the real vowels for God's name are. We don't know what the vowels are. And that's also why a Jew would never even try to pronounce God's name. One only reads Adonai when one sees God's name written, yud Hey vav Hey. And finally, in a prayer book, you would rarely see God's proper name written at all. When the rabbis created blessings and they wanted to bless God and use God's proper name, instead of writing God's name out of respect, they would not do that, they wrote an abbreviation of God's name. And the abbreviation of God's name in Jewish prayers, in blessings, in the Siddur, in the prayer book, is taking the first letter of God's name and doubling it. So the abbreviation for God's name in the prayer book is Yud Yud. And the vowels are the first vowel from the word Adonai, the Shiva, and the last vowel from the word Adonai, the Kamatz. If one were to try to pronounce it, it would sound like Yiya but no Jew ever pronounces this word because it stands for God's proper name. And God's proper name is never recited. Instead, the word Lord or my Lord is used Adonai. And even in the abbreviation of God's proper name, the vowels that you see there come from the word Adonai. And one of the most important things to understand about the Jewish prayer book and the Jewish liturgy and the Jewish tradition is that, number one, God does have a proper name. It's yud heh vav -Hey, And at some time, we'll get a chance to talk about the exquisiteness of that being God's name in the Jewish tradition. yud heh vav -Hey, by the way, comes from the verb hey yud hey. And the verb hey yud hey is the verb to be in Hebrew. God's proper name is based on the verb to be in what's called the imperfect tense, the incomplete tense, what modern Hebrew uses as the future tense. It's as if God's name is a sense of being that is in constant becoming, constant process. The Jewish tradition understands God to be the essence, the ground of being, still becoming. 
And the name of God, yud heh vav heh, is based on this verb, not a noun. In the Jewish tradition, God is not a thing. God is the energy that pulses through the universe, the energy that gives the universe all of its power and meaning and possibilities. And that is what the Jewish tradition understands God to be. And there's a midrash that says, how did God ever get God's name? And in the midrash, the answer is, the first human being who named all the animals, named the elephant and the dog and the cat and the salmon and the sparrow and the eagle and the worm, Adam, the first human being, according to the Midrash, also gave God, God's name, yud Hey vav Hey. It's the expression of the Jewish tradition understanding that God is not a thing. God is a power, an essence, the being that gives ground and meaning to human and all existence. And whenever we see the name of God, yud Hey vav Hey. We say, my Lord, Adonai. And when you see it written, you now understand what most people don't understand, that the vowels of God's name, when written in a chumash of five books of Moses, are the vowels not of God's name, but the vowels of the word Adonai. I hope you enjoyed that lesson of from the Aleph Bet. And remember, you can download lesson sheets and worksheets for every lesson of this series free of charge. Just visit the JBS website homepage at jbstv.org and click on the program icon for From the Aleph Bet. And then click on the very first option, From the Aleph Bet Hebrew Study Sheets. And for anyone who can send JBS, a tax-deductible donation of $180 or more will be pleased to send you the entire 20 program series one of From the Aleph Bet on DVD, complete with a CD of lesson sheets and worksheets. JBS, expanding Jewish understanding, celebrating all things Jewish. Be well, my friends. Aleph, bet, bet, gimel, dalet, hey, vav, sein, chet, tet, yud, kaf, chaf, lamed, mem, nun, samech, ayin, pei, fit, sadi, kuf, reish, shun, sin, tof, now I think I've said enough.